the gospel text that we will read today from the gospel of Luke chapter 24 verses 13 to 35 is a very beautiful text. It is a text that is exclusive to the gospel of Luke and found in no other gospel. The title of these verses is The Walk to Emmaus. In the Gospel of Luke, the disciples are told very clearly that no matter what happens, no matter the situation, they must never leave Jerusalem. If they leave Jerusalem, it is an indication that they are disobedient that they have not believed in the promise of the Lord, it is an indication that they have given up and they have given in. As we begin the gospel of today, we will realize that there are two disciples. Luke does not give us the names at the start. Later, he gives us the name of only one disciple who is Cleophas. The other disciple could be me. And so I walk along with Cleophas and I experience what the Lord does to Cleophas and me. The fact that we are walking away from Jerusalem and to Emmaus already means that we have given in to despair, that we have lost hope, that we have not believed in the promise of the Lord, that we are disobedient and not heard what he asked us to do. And because that is the case, our walk to Emmaus is a drudgery. Our walk to Emmaus is heavy. Our walk to Emmaus is laden with care. Our heads are bowed low. Every step is painful. And we cannot make progress as we ought to. Because we are moving away from hope. We are moving away from love. We are moving away from life and preferring to embrace death and darkness as we walk to Emmaus. But the Lord is a Lord of light. The Lord is a Lord of love. The Lord is a Lord of consolation. And even as he walks, he walks with us. But because we are moving towards despair. We cannot see him. We cannot hear him. We cannot recognize and experience him. And he takes the initiative in asking us what we are doing and where we are going. And we explain to the main actor in the story, the whole story. We have had the experience of Jesus of Nazareth, we tell him, who was a prophet mighty in word and deed, and how our religious leaders punished him because they could not accept the proclamation that he made of an unconditional and loving God. And they crucified him, and they killed him, and they laid him in the tomb, and he had promised us we talk about Jesus in the past tense when Jesus is present with us. He had promised us that he would rise and now it is three days and there is really nothing. We are living in the past. We have not believed the promises. We have given in to despair. We have lost hope. And the Lord listens to us patiently. The Lord listens to us attentively and intently. And then, after we have preached, he speaks. And he speaks about himself as in the present moment. He tells us that all that happened had to have happened because it fitted in with God's plan. He explains that even though it seemed that God was not in control when things were happening which were beyond our control, God was still in control. God allowed things to happen because it fit in with God's plan. This is what Jesus explains. 
but because we are closed. But because we have blinkers before our eyes and stoppers in our ears and our hearts have become hardened, we cannot understand what he says. We only hear it. We don't listen attentively. We do not assimilate. And then we invite this same Lord who we have not yet recognized, we invite him to come and stay with us. And the Lord is gracious. Even though he meant to go away, even though he meant not to impose on us, he accepts our invitation. And he comes in and sits down to supper with us. Supper is the most intimate of communion. In Revelation chapter 3, verse 20, the Lord says, Behold, I stand at your door and knock. If you open the door, I will come in and sit down to supper with you and you with me. So supper is an intimate communion and we invite the Lord to this intimate communion and the Lord accepts our invitation and the Lord comes. And even as we sit at table, the Lord takes bread and breaks it and our eyes are opened. In that one gesture of the breaking of the bread, everything that the Lord did, everything that the Lord said, everything that the Lord is, not was, is, comes back to mind. And we recognize the Lord. We recognize the Lord in the gesture of breaking of himself. And our eyes are open, and our hearts are open, and our ears are open. And now we can see, and we can hear, and we can experience, but the Lord vanishes from our sight. Because the Lord has fulfilled what he had come to do, to give us back that hope, and we, who had gone away to Emmaus, we who had gone away to a mouse and given in to despair, even though it is now late, come back to Jerusalem, that very hour. Ah. Our hearts are once again back in Jerusalem. Our hearts are once again filled with hope. The hope that we lost is now renewed by the Lord himself. There are times in our lives when things do not go the way we want them to go. When life seems a drudgery. When there is no light at the end of the tunnel. When we want to throw in the towel. We want to give in to despair. We lose hope and we walk away from Jerusalem toward a mouse. And our negative frame of mind and heart prevents us from seeing that the Lord is by our side, that the Lord is accompanying us, that the Lord is talking to us, and yet we use verbs in the past tense. We focus too much on the past. There is too much of regret. There is too much of remorse. There is too much of sadness about what has been. And the Lord invites us to realize that he is not a God of the past. He is not even a God of the future. He is a God of the present. He is a God of the now. He is not a dead Jesus. He is the risen Christ. And even as we invite the Lord into our hearts, you will be able to see the Lord breaking bread, breaking himself, giving of himself to the whole of humanity. We will experience in that one gesture of breaking bread, the entire life of the Lord encapsulated in it. And our eyes will be open, and our ears will be open, and our hearts will be unstopped. And we too will return to Jerusalem. A mouse can be anything which we do, 
which takes us away from hope and moving into despair. A mouse can be a habit, like too much consumption of alcohol, too much smoking, giving in to the, the drugs, infidelity, any of these things from which we seek an escape from our present situation is our own Emmaus. And even as we walk to that Emmaus, even as we continue to drink and continue to smoke and continue to indulge in drugs and continue in our infidelity, the Lord invites us to hear what he is saying. The Lord invites us to realize that a mouse is not the place we ought to be. And the Lord comes into our own a mouse and the Lord breaks bread. And we recognize the Lord in that gesture of breaking of himself. And at that moment, we come back to Jerusalem. Will you keep moving to a mouse? If you are in a mouse, will you realize that the Lord is back in Jerusalem? And will you come back 